everyone. I'm Sheila Toonin. I'm Chair of the School Libraries Group Scotland and I'm really delighted to welcome you all today, the first event for Libraries Week, which is really exciting. And it's all about our new guide, Managing a School Library. This is going to be very much a living, evolving resource and you're all encouraged to add to it. It will be housed on the SILIPS website and there's Padlet links for everyone to add to it and you're invited to contribute to the Padlet and to make any comments if you can please. We've started the guide with five sections and these will be shared with you in a moment. The plan this evening is for us all to discuss this resource and for us all to have input into its contents. So please um, let us know what you think. And as I said, could you add your comments into the chat as we go along or you could switch on your audio and share your views during discussion. I'm going to hand over to Derek in a second on the committee and he's going to share the guide with you on the screen. And as I say, if you can add any comments into the chat or get involved in the discussion, the event will be filmed and you can view it later as well. So I'm now going to hand over to Derek, who will share the guide on the screen, and I hope you have a lovely evening. Thanks for coming this evening. Uh, my name's Derek. I am the school librarian at Preston Lodge High School uh, in East Lothian. I've probably met most of you, if not all of you, at some point over the, the past few years. Um, and like Sheila says, this is very much, uh, how do I say this, it's, it's, it's a bank of ideas that's open to suggestions. Um, we want to see this as a, an evolving document, a cooperative piece of work, not a final statement on how to manage a school library, but... Um, something that's going to keep growing and developing over over the next year or two. Um, and I would, again, also encourage you all to, once you have the, the link to the Padlet, please do um, enter your thoughts in there, share your thoughts in there about what you think would be a, an effective way of managing a school library. Um, and then, oh, my head teacher has just tried to come into the library. Sorry. Um, sorry, folks. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, the Padlet, please do add to the Padlet there. Um, let me just try and share my screen with everyone. Okay, folks, I hope everyone can now see this. This is the, the, um, the pages on the Sillips website. So, managing a school library, like I said, um, we know the positive impact, etc. I'm going to go through each section and give you a small summary of what's included here. I don't think I'm going to read it verbatim because I think that would be, after a, a Monday at work, I think that would be quite, quite, quite boring for everyone. And I may put everyone to sleep instead of... Um, oh, oh, hold on, there we are, yes. So, library and career development. The um, first part of the document is about planning ahead, and I think we all do this anyway, planning ahead for the following year. Um, of course, it's crucial to do this, um, but of course, we need to think tight. Uh, and many of them, much of that time happens during summer. Um, so one of the first things we need to do is know what we want for your library. What do you want for your library? Um, a couple of documents that we all probably use already is the National Strategy and How Good Is Our School Library? The um, National Strategy, uh, which is more of an improvement planning tool, um, and I'm sure, again, everyone knows the five areas that are um, uh, defined for improving um, on. And the Higgins uh, Library is more of an evaluative tool. Um, to save time, I think many of you may have used this already too. Um, one of our committee members, or previous committee members, Pamela, um, she uh, created the VTLTS planning tool, which is a fab resource, actually. Simple spreadsheet with um, five, five tabs. Uh, you bullet point what you would like to do in each row, um, and it will identify the gaps that um, you currently have in your service. Um, after that, again, I've got to know what your school wants. Speak to uh, other teachers, speak to your... Um, 
senior leadership team, look for um, your current school improvement plans, ask to see drafts of the following year, um, possible plans, and talk to teachers in each department, each subject areas about what their priorities are, and incorporate all of those into your, your own plans. As for writing the plan itself, um, it's always best to use the templates that your own school use uh, to try and amalgamate your own the library into the school further. We know there can be issues with that at times. Um, and it also shows the, uh, the school, um, if you're part of the whole school development, you're not separate from the, from the school. Um, end of year reports. Uh, if everybody does end of year, end of year reports, I'm presuming everybody does. Again, it's useful to, to link this in with your life manager or SMT, even if they don't request it. Um, make an end of term report and send it to them. Um, there's lots of good uh, templates for those that um, we will add to, to, to the web pages here that you can then use. Um, your PRD, your own PRD, your, your, um, your uh, meetings between yourself and your, your line manager, discussing your successes from the previous year and making your plans for the, the following year, choosing your own personal goals, um, be time consuming, that's, that's, that's very true. Although we are stretched for time, I would say, school librarians, try not to create extra work for yourself. And think about what you're already planning and how these schools can feed into um, what the school are planning to. Um, and again, the VLTS planning tool can help you with your own um, professional development. Um, and of course, this is the next little part here. And finally, um, every school librarian worth their salt comes across interesting ideas, research, and resources throughout the year. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm always seeing the work of others and thinking, oh, that's good, that's a great idea. Um, and then um, I'll come back a week or so later wondering, oh, where, where did I put that? Should I save that somewhere? It's in a wake club, it's in a, a favourites tab. It could be something even as simple as a Word document. Um, let me go back to the main page and we'll move on to curriculum planning. So, curriculum planning. Again, um, with the library, the English department, they're always the main users, but um, it's important to make the school wide. I'm sure everyone is doing this already. Um, the best way to do this, again, introduce yourself to all MPTs, as a department, um, try and get along to staff meetings, um, make yourself available for staff lunches if you can. Um, and consider some of the other wider staff members within your school. For example, youth workers, skills development in Scotland, counsellors, nurses, etc. etc. Everyone will provide opportunities for you to collaborate. Um, then here is a little um, example of an audit that you can do for current and past involvement with each subject department. As you can see here, the art design, uh, however in the past, you have books, lists, lessons, advanced higher research. You can look through these. Um, it's a great tool for um, looking at what you have offered, what's been offered previously what you would like to offer in um, uh, uh, future years. Derek, I'm so sorry to interrupt. It's so fascinating, but we are struggling with your sound a bit. I think a few people are... Oh, sorry, okay. Sorry. Uh, can, 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 I, can you hear me now? Okay. It's still a bit... It's a bit mixed. It's strange, isn't it? I think a few people are finding it. Um, I don't know what else. I, uh, I'll see what I can do in this side. Uh, my volume's up, everything's on. Uh, it's, com it's coming and going. People are saying that in the chat as well. It's really it's just frustrating because it's a school laptop, isn't it? It's not even, yeah. Absolutely. It's the laptop that I'm using. So, in fact, it probably is. So, um, a bit better there, maybe. I don't know. Sorry. That was a Derek, bit better. Even if you lean, could you try leaning in, leaning in sort of really forward? So, it might be really uncomfortable for you, but we might be able to hear you better. Stop my video if you don't mind if to lean in then. Um, because I don't want everyone to I don't want to scare everyone off with this. 
briefly get towards yeah. speaking at them. Um, so do let me know if you can't hear me anymore. Okay, that's definitely a wee bit better. So, okay, thank you. Sorry, everybody. We can <laughs> we can hear you at least, Derek. Now, thank you. Ah, that's good. Okay. Um, where were we? Yeah, development planning. Um, yeah, yeah use the school curriculum um, summaries from each of your schools to, to help with your planning. There's a, there's a, a an example just down here um, from Anderson High School. Um, this is good. Um, topic topics and units of work from S one. And what do they learn about and how do they learn? Um, go through each term for each subject, pinpoint what topics are taught in each subject and how you could offer to help those. That could be books and resources, literacy lessons, uh, to tie in with topics, and also all extracurricular clubs and events that may um, support that. Um, approach principal teachers, yes. Obviously, always, always do that. Try and get s &T involved all the time. Um, add all these to your plans. Top tip, if you're struggling, think about the teachers you get on with best and approach them to do a one-off lesson. I think, uh, as you all probably know, this works um, really well. Word of mouth travels fast in schools. And if you get on with someone particularly well, do it with them and um, word will travel fast. Let me see. I'm hoping everyone can still hear me here. Um, collection management and diversity. So again, this is another part of our job that is um, hugely important. The aim of the library within a secondary school is to provide access to information and ideas to support learning and teaching across the curriculum and crucially to promote reading for pleasure. Um, this will be part of everyone's stock management policy that we share with SLT and line managers. Um, it will cover many, many topics, LGBTQ+, uh, disabilities and neurodiversity. Um, it's Black History Month at the moment. Um, I'm sure many of us are doing work around that with um, departments and displays and promotions. Um, and of course, um, a bit of a hot topic at the moment, um, it has been for a while now, is the, uh, the censorship and intellectual freedom in school library statement put together by Silla and SLA, um, a response to the growing movement uh, of uh, censoring books in the USA, but also books that are challenged in the UK too at the moment. Um, I think that's hugely important to, to, to include. Like I said previously, librarians will all be working with, in collaboration with sub subject departments at least once a year to discuss the requirements for the year ahead. I'm not going to read all of this, folks, because um, I'll let you uh, work your way through this yourself and take notes and you can give feedback on the Padlet. Um, we'll keep going, mental health collections, yeah. I'm sure many of us have a, a, um, a shelf help section and there are many um, reading lists available for that. And how to shelve, this is an interesting topic. My topic. Um, you know, do you, do, you, do you stick on LGBT plus mental health books? Are they shelved in their own collections? Uh, are they with the main collection? Are they shelved individually? Um, I guess that's really up to each librarian's preference and how the uh, their relationships with them with their students. Uh, there's a good list of useful web websites here. Now let me just move on back to the next part. Uh, your school library policy. Um, again, everyone will have a school library policy which we aim to update annually. Um, a lot of this was based on SLA guideline, guidelines and then developed from there. So yeah, why have a school library policy? Basically, what's your vision for the library? What do you want to provide? Um, a school library policy is another great way of setting out your aims and objectives and selling your, your uh, professionalism to SLT and your line manager and uh, other stakeholders within your school. Um, Again, before writing your policy, it's always good to check the aims and objectives of your school and school library service if you have one and include them within your policy. You can start with the mission statement and you can start and then you can move on to how you intend to 
manage your library and your communication? How are you known in your library? Are you a school librarian, a resource centre manager? Are you supported in your library with staff, people librarians? Um, how do you communicate um, with staff, parents and SLT? Uh, your opening hours and how the library is accessed? Um, your loan systems and your overdues, uh, library rules. Do you have a library rule policy? Again, this may well be this may well be individual to each librarian. Your resources, collection management. Explain your selection po policy. How you buy items? Why you buy items from the library? Do you choose them all? Is, do you help have uh, pupil librarians help you choose? And weeding. How do you weed in your library? Going is it once per year? Um, what are your guidelines? What's your criteria for reading? How, how do you decide? And your digital resources. Um, you know, make a list of the resources that you can offer students and staff. Um, your budget. Now, this is an interesting area for student librarian and um, people. Library, sorry, school librarians. Um, I think it's uh, important to highlight. The standards and stipulations set by SLA and SILIP. Um, not all of us will meet those, but I think it's important to set those out in a school library policy and make that aware to the stakeholders of your school. Um, complaints and challenged materials. Um, I've only come across this once personally within my library, I'm lucky to say. Um, but the, the American Library Association provides some excellent resources for handling formal and informal complaints. Um, and we'll be adapting their um, templates for, for us, for Scottish School Libraries, and we'll be including these in um, this website. The accommodation, the library space, and the environment is uh, suitable. Um, do you provide separate study areas and reading for pleasure areas? What else does your library offer? Um, are students involved in the design of the library space? Library activities, which um, extracurricular uh, curricular clubs and activities do you provide? Um, national and annual in initiatives do you offer each year? And library lessons and study skills, um, you know, uh, primary, primary cluster transitions, S1 library inductions, um, do you provide an information literacy programme within your school, interventions, paired reading, book talks, etc. Uh, partnerships and uh, CBT, again, uh, this is a, a great way to promote your professionalism within your school library policy. Uh, an evaluation and annual reports. How um, will your sales and service be evaluated, evaluated? Do you receive an annual professional review and development statements in your policy? Um, uh, it's also recommended you provide SLT with the annual re review, uh, your um, school library improvement plan and the library development plan, perhaps looking ahead to the next three to five years. Um, again, outline all these, just an outline in your school library policy, and all of these will go a good way to promoting the use of the school library um, and your uh, professionalism uh, and the use of the school library as a whole school, uh, making an impact on the whole, whole school. Um, folks, I hope everyone managed to hear that. Um, I do advise everyone to have a read through. Um, if you've got any questions, I'm sure you'll pop them in the chat. I hope we can talk about it and I'd love everyone to um, contribute to the Padlet so we can then take your suggestions for improving this document and um, adding them to the SILIPS website. Thank you so much, Derek. Um, and yeah, we've, we've got a lot in there. We've got a lot in our Managing a School Library Guide, but it's also for everyone to contribute to, as we said earlier, and to have input into. Um, we're going to start the discussion in a minute, and I would really like if you could, um, if you wanted to unmute and, and contribute to that. One of the things that's been flagged up to us is by one of our new professionals, and that is behaviour management. And I wonder if we could start with that, if that's OK, if people wanted to contribute from more experienced professionals, but also our new professionals as well, because it is definitely an issue, uh, behaviour management for many. And as I say, it's been flagged up by one of our new professionals as being an issue for her. 
Um, so if we could start the, any discussion on that and then we can hopefully move on to anything else that's been flagged up there on the guide. So just to reiterate what Derek was saying, we have library and career development in there, curriculum planning, collection management and diversity and school library policy. So there's quite a lot there and you know it's best to have a read of that in your own time and then contribute. So would anyone like to start the chat, uh, first of all, on behaviour management in your school library? Any tips, for example, any advice for young new professionals? Not necessarily young, but young in the job. <laughs> Hi, Sheila. It's um, sorry, I'm moving my computer because I, you, can't, you can't see my face, I don't think. Hi, <laughs> Sheila. It's Linda here from Stordway. And I just want to say I'm really, really pleased to meet you because I'm aware that you're actually Fiona's sister. Fiona is on our SMT. Oh yes, yes. Uh -huh. um, I'm. Um, I am yes, a, I'm, there. How are you doing? It's nice to uh, have I'm, you from the Western Isles. <laughs> yes, I'm okay. Thank you. I just wanted to say I have kind of inherited a library, <laughs> shall we say? Um, I I started as a library assistant, um, having worked in community education for a long time, but um, I've inherited a library which was run um by the same person for um a long time. And um, what tends to happen in our library is um, that um, in our class visits, it's meant to be the classroom teacher that's responsible for behaviour. Um, because in the class visits, the class teacher is there and it's meant to be them that are responsible for behaviour. But I have to say, <laughs> this is from experience, sometimes you do have to intervene. Um, and I have to say, I, I actually sometimes find that quite d difficult, you know, for this, if a child's swinging on a chair and the teacher's doing nothing, you sometimes have to go over and say or whatever. So I too would appreciate just advice um, from more experienced people as to how to deal with that. Um, eh, and also just a general thing for me, I'm looking at all the information that is there and I know that I'm going to find all of this really, really helpful because um, uh, probably our library has become more central to the school. We're very, very busy now. Um, it was quite different before. And um, I've got a lot of engaging with other departments to do. I mean, I have been doing some, but to make them realise that the library is, you know, for their departments and we can help support them because that's not really been happening. Okay, well, thanks for that, Linda. Um, yeah, it's it's not easy when you've you've inherited something for sure. Would anybody else like to come in um, on, as I say, any tips and advice there that Linda was mentioning on any of our issues? Perhaps those who've been in the job longer than others, even who've had issues but overcome them. I think, um, to, if you don't mind, Sheila, um, I, might just, I might just say one, one of the things I find, there's a couple of people here in the chat who are talking about um, advice on um, behaviour management as well in, in the library. And I think the first, the first um, protocol is following your, school, your school's um, management behaviour. And that can be, depending on the school, it can be you know, one, one warning, it can be then Due to head on call, um, and I think it's I think it's fair to keep that in line with the school and to follow the same guidelines as the school, and then you will receive more support from SLT and other teachers. Um, I think that's probably from, from, from my point of view. From, from, for me, that's that's worked really really well. I guess the other the other part is is um, it's also you know the relationships you have with. Um, the students who visit your library and, and uh, why they're in the library, um, and I appreciate it, is it can be difficult. When, Thank you. Uh, my, my sound going again. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. It's okay. Don't worry. I think, yeah, I think it's, I would agree with what you're saying. I think. Um, look at your numbers that are coming in as well you know particularly at lunch times and maybe you have to close the library interval and take some time for yourself uh, open it at lunchtime but operate different clubs and different events and activities make sure you've perhaps got a member of staff with you to begin with until you feel that you're in control if you like you know ask someone to come with you 
Um, and if need be, like totally limit numbers that are coming in um, and, and perhaps try and have sort of very directed small groups to begin with and, and sort of shut other people out that are not really focused until you feel that you're in control of it all, I suppose, and that you feel that you're supported by your SLT. I'd like to add as well that if there are ever are any incidents that you do feel uncomfortable, just make sure you get SLT into the library as soon as possible. That's what they're there for. I know quite often the library isn't directly near where they're, you know, on duty at great lunchtime and things like that, but usually someone can radio for them and get them up there as quickly as you possibly can. Just from the, the chat as well, there's a couple of um, questions about what to do with groups, um, particularly groups of people who are misbehaving and maybe have been asked to leave, but they're refusing to go. Again, that's something for SLT or the nearest principal teacher or yeah. faculty leader that you can find. They've got much more clout than we have. Um, they are, you know, they can yeah. use the same system or behaviour management systems online. They can put much more onto um, referrals and things like that than we can. I agree with that too. I think yeah. one, one of the other avenues of exploring is also if you have your um, SLT on board uh, as um, SLT enforcement year group assemblies um, and having you involved in the assemblies too um, if it's an ongoing issue, if behaviour is an ongoing issue. Yeah, yeah. I think you know it's easy to say relationships are everything, but you have to definitely work at relationships with with your pupils and. Um, I suppose it, it will take time and, and it is more difficult when you're new in post and you've maybe not had the experience of a school library before and you suddenly seem to be invaded by all these numbers and especially big lads that are seem to be coming in and they've got their hoodies on or their bags on their backs and it can be quite intimidating for sure so definitely you need to go and seek support and ask for, for that from your SLT or even just a colleague along the corridor ask them to come in with you but you shouldn't have to put up with it either so you need to try and be firm i suppose and say that you're you're not going to do it if if it's not resolved and, and sometimes we can phrase like that that you can work with your slt uh, on this to try and get some kind of policy or a strategy in place and sometimes as well making the threat of closing the library if behavior doesn't improve the other mm -hmm. people's police help you police the rest of them and um, you can get them on board as well and they, they, they sometimes have more sway with the other people's than, than you do yeah. because they'll maybe listen to them yeah i'm sorry guys i'm, I'm just looking through the, um, the chat as well and there's a number of people talking about signing into the library um and some some of you do and some of you don't um during and post COVID, post is really post COVID. Um, during those times, uh, uh, that was happening here, but I don't do it anymore. I have to say, I uh, know some people do, and some people don't. I guess that can be helpful if um, you look, you're using it as a way to um, manage behaviour, and you're keeping a track of who's coming and going in the library. Um, I'm sure. Yeah, there we go. From experience, Graham there to talk about one of the key things to manage in behaviour is to be able to identify students by name. Um, I'm quite lucky here at Preston Lodge, all the students have their names on the back of their hoodies. So uh, if anyone tries to run away, I know who it is. Um, yeah, that definitely helps if you get to know your pupils. Yeah. Um, they're amazed that you remember their name and that something scares them as well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I also think humour can diffuse a lot of situations, you know, because they do appreciate that as well, and they see it's kind of normal in, in a way. Um, so to just, to, as I say, just to try and work at the relationships and definitely try and speak to them by their names, yeah. I think adding um, a structure... Is there anything else? Sorry. Yes, I, I, I thought of, I was advised by SLT, for example, to limit in a way, but in a sensible way, the amount of pupils who are flooding the library. So maybe adding a structure to the library that uh, only uh, on certain days when you have clubs going on, 
that those people are only for borrowing books or maybe per year also just adding structure not like everyone at the same time and then slowly then releasing it wider once everyone gets to use to to behavior and the more visible you are with your class along your uh, alongside the class teacher i think that's how you build the relationship uh, when I, I just finished the inductions that lasted four weeks, I was a lot in S1 classes and for the showcase, uh, the parents came and I was speaking with pupils and I was asking, who is your literacy teacher? And they said, you are. And I said, yeah, but who, who else? Who is with me? The other adult, the other teacher in the class, because they see me thanks to that I spent so much time with them in the class. They see me as a, as a co-teacher with them and it helps a lot. Uh, with relationship and with behavior, but for me, adding the structure to to lunch times uh, helped a lot. That, for example, you could only uh, let people in in the first fifteen minutes, and then it would avoid having the the late comers just before on rainy days, just before ten last minute, ten minutes before bell, uh, just to hang out and create a crowd or something like this. So um I, I found that very useful and in terms of behavior of classes when they come with a teacher and it is not ideal or the teacher sends out pupils to the library to borrow books in and sends a group of pupils um um that's a different thing so this is something i would discuss with the head of english or uh, or my uh, link person deputy head and it would be arranged on the higher level that we keep we have standards or how how we do and uh how we do it now after many uh, discussions trials and after a few years uh, and thanks to covid i i ask just to send very small groups mm -hmm to the library because it helps me. I am now alone issuing books and giving advices. So rather than having 10, I ask, send me please by fours or threes or five. It, it just goes quicker rather than I had a group of 15 bouncing around the library and wasting their time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks so much, Jessica. Um, that's really helpful. Um, especially you've been seen as, as their literacy teacher. I noticed Graham has got a couple of comments in the chat, which is really relevant and useful that um, an overloaded library uh, is a sign that people are, there's not enough social areas in school for them or that they maybe don't feel safe in other areas, um, which is really pertinent comment. So thank you for that, Graham. Would anybody like to add to that or chip in there? Anything else on behaviour management? No, would, would anybody like to raise anything else that's in the guide talked about? Derek mentioned about school library policy, about your vision for the library and where you want to, to go, what you want to provide. Does anybody want to speak about that or collection management and diversity? What about what Derek mentioned earlier about do you put your LGBT resources in your mental health areas or do you have them somewhere else? And indeed, do you label your LGBT resources? Right. I'm going to put my head up here because um, uh, we live in the Western Isles and um, I, I maybe shouldn't be saying this, but I am going to say it. <laughs> um, uh, we have an LGBT section. Um, LGBTQ plus section, which I've now put in a, in a we have a Zen zone, a chip, we've got two chill out areas, and I have a section where I have put the books and every everybody knows where they are. Um, we have quite a unique situation here in that the church, um, there are quite a lot of people who um, have very strong religious beliefs, including counsellors. And um, there's been quite a lot of backlash um, to do with um, LGBT plus materials and including a board that had to be removed. It was just absolutely horrendous. But for me, it's about supporting the young people. And also I have a legal obligation to, you know, to be able to provide information um, and, you know, and materials. So I actually have 
all the young people know where they are and, and you can see them. But um, I, I find this, I mean, I had a situation where I wanted to do a display and basically I couldn't make the display overtly obvious as to what it was because it was likely that there would be complaints in the school. So I basically, there was a rainbow on it and it was talking about diversity and differences and, and all this sort of thing, which is dancing around the subject for me because I feel actually I'm not doing what I should be doing, but I'm also mindful of the fact that I've got to try and create a balance. And I don't know if anyone else has come across anything like this, but, um, you know, I, I is think, it, it I is think, something um, for me. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I don't think you're maybe you, uh, on your own here with this, Linda, because it probably is the case with some of the librarians that work in Catholic secondary schools. I don't know if we've got any with us today. If, if there are, would anybody like to speak about this? Because I know that you might face similar issues. Anyone that works in a Catholic secondary school? Did I maybe come in here? Yes. Yeah, hi, hi, yeah, hi, Pamela. Yeah. I am Pamela, I work at St. Ninian, so I, I work in a Catholic school. And um, to be honest, that was one of the things I was most nervous of when I started working in the school, because I knew what my legal obligation was, and I was worried about complaints. But at the end of the day, if we get complaints, we get complaints. But the legal obligation is that we provide that information and escape and fiction to all of our students. And if there are complaints, that's why it's so important to have a policy worked out. So this managing a school yeah. library booklet, that's why it's important because you can then say, I've had a complaint, but I can refer you to the policy that says legally I have an obligation to provide this information. And that's why it's, it is important as well to, to flag up to, to SMT. And it is about building relationships and using sort of um, like the positive relationships you've got with staff and with with pupils because at the end of the day if pupils aren't seeing themselves in your library yeah the library is not for them and of course it's one of the safest spaces in school often so it's very difficult to stick your head above the parapet sometimes but the law is on your on your side with it i think you can sometimes sort of use technology as a sort of way around it i've got a lgbt book collection it's just interfiled with the rest of them because i consulted my lgbt group and that's the way they preferred it um, so, but I have a QR code that links to a list, a book list, so that it directs people to the titles and where to find them. Um, and I think that's quite a simple way of doing it as well. That kind of gets around that blatantly having it in people's faces, and it's still there for people to look at quite easily themselves. Yeah, that's helpful. And Linda, I hope that, you know, that's, um, you've got something there and I'm sure we'd be happy for you to get in touch with her, wouldn't you, Pamela? If, you know, if you wanted to ask any more about it and, and same with Gillian, get some tips and hints there. Um, I think it would be useful you know, to hear from, from those librarians that do work in Catholic schools. Yeah, because, you know, they're experiencing that every day and they've, they've got their policies in place. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, we've got a couple of comments in the chat, I think, about it there. Are you able to read that, Gillian? I can't read it too well. Yeah, yeah. And Kirsten's talking about the legal obligation. She's put links in there. And then poor Vicky's telling us, sharing with us that she took a, a group of people to an LGBT author talk. And then she had complaints from a parent, even though the letter had gone home, says stating who they were going to visit and things like that. So... Uh, that's something else we're up against as well, isn't it? Um, you don't want to actually speak yeah. to the author and have author visits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's so I'm just thinking here, if someone else yeah, has mentioned sure. that they've got yes, LGBT definitely an issue in the catalogue yeah. and things. Mm -hmm. well, to, to clear um, there, as we got an interesting point about our, the Pride Group wants to see our conception. Um, in the library, um, and the same here, actually, Claire, our uh, group wanted a separate section in the library. So I uh, worked with them uh, on developing stock um, and the section in the library. Uh, however, I'm aware, and I have reservations, the only reservations being that I'm aware that um, that may well, as you, as you are aware of as well, this may well um, put off many students who, who would very much like to read these books 
that aren't at the stage in their lives yet where they feel comfortable um, approaching them um, so openly. Uh, so it's a bit of a mix. I mean, I guess that's where budget issues come into play as well, where we can't always buy multiple copies of a book, you know, have one display in a particular session or in our general collections um, or alongside them in, in general collections. It's just, um, I, I don't think there's uh, an answer. <laughs> I'd very much like to have it. I just, I just feel it's, it's really a, each each school library is is uh, individual, and it's up to the school library to, to gauge the pupils and the SLT and the, and the needs there. And then you've you've highlighted a really good blog post by Stephen on building house libraries, LGBTQ plus collection large. If you haven't read it. Urge everyone to, to have a read of that. It's really, it's really good. Thanks for that, Derek. Yeah, that's great. Um, um, and we've got the health and wellbeing boxes, and there's a mix of oh, yes. books, <laughs> including LGBTQ in there. Oh, and um, Graham, I just missed that. The pupils are free to remove the stickers. One, is that right? On there, on the chat there. Can't see. Okay. Um, I did read a post, um, I think it was an American school librarian had written last month about how she advocates not having labels on books at all and not even to ask your, we have an equalities group in school, I'm sure they've got different names in different schools and not even to ask them and just to make that decision. I don't know what people feel about that. Um, she was quite strong opinionly about it to say don't have any stickers. Uh, Sheila, I've bought labels, but I've bought um, along with, I think it's at Carol Press, along with different genre labels to, to indicate adventure, um, science fiction and things like that. So when I'm going to be using them, because my uh, the, the young people did ask for the LGBT ones, I'm just going to be using stickers in general um, on some of the books. We're going to trial it, uh, particularly for the first years who maybe aren't very keen readers to indicate the sorts of genres that books are. So we just we, when I do it, it will just be along with that. But I'll do it. Okay. Um, well, if people can sort of put these comments onto the Padlet, that means that everyone can see it. And that would be really useful, I think, for everyone. And then we can, you know, we can see what people are, different viewpoints on it and different approaches. And it's really, really useful to see that. I think what Derek said earlier about you're always seeing what other people are doing and thinking, oh, I wonder if you could adopt that or adapt it. So it'd be really useful to get... Um, everybody's comments I see Maureen's comment our anti-racist group said the same we don't have a diversity section either okay so it's all um, embedded in your one collection okay mixed in together and the LGBT Rachel saying there is not a genre so all really really interesting really interesting comments coming in there okay would anyone like to pick up on any of the other areas that are in in the guide at the moment does anybody want to say anything about vibrant libraries, thriving schools? Um, the strategy will be changing um, soon, you know, it only looks up to 2023. So I don't know if anybody wants to comment on that and how they use vibrant libraries and thriving schools, which is, you know, is the National School Library strategy. Um, anybody want to say anything about that? I don't know if you know about Pamela, who used to be on the committee, who was, is here today, created a wonderful planning tool. If, you, if you're able to access that for um, doing your, your department review and any planning, um, it's very, very useful to use. I used it just recently for my own department review, and I would really recommend it, if you haven't seen it, to try and use it. So thank you very much, Pamela, again for it. It can sometimes be difficult, can't it? Like when you've got a big strategy to know how you can apply it in a mm -hmm. practical way. Um, and one of the things I know it's come up before we've talked about funding bids, but sometimes when you see a deadline, it's very quick to submit. And if you've done something like that, it's quite good to be able to go back to it and see a gap. And then maybe that 
Padla or Wakela or where you've where you've collected all these ideas, it means that you can be thinking as the year goes through so that when funding opportunities come up, you've already done the work, if you like, of thinking what would you like to provide. So it can it can be useful for lots of different things. I, I totally, I totally, totally endorse that. I, I've just um, funding came out in our school. And we were all asked to bid and to show that whatever you were bidding for had to have an impact and achievement. And I found again using that planning tool and really helped. Could immediately pick out indicators and and put that into the wee, the wee blurb for the funding. So yeah, if you haven't seen it, um, would it be worth having that on the Sillops website? Do you think in the school libraries part to have a link to it? to the virtual libraries thriving schools planning tool. I think it is there. It, it is. is there. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think um, just as we were talking about funding in general, or, um, everyone, I wonder if uh, that would be something um, people would like, a, a section on funding and a plan for, for, for funding. I'm sure we've all done it, and I'm sure we've all, we're all fairly, fairly used to it, but sometimes um, um, people um, ideas that we haven't really thought of ourselves, and we thought, oh, we think, oh, that, that, that sounds good. Let's uh, let's try that way for a change. And perhaps there could be another section in the the, the managing the school library and um, pages uh, on the site. Yeah. Um, Anne's asking, is VLTS planning tool in Education Scotland's professional learning community too? I yeah. think it might be. Yeah, if you haven't been into Education Scotland's professional community there, it is worth having a look at that as well. It's very useful. And we might we'll include that in the Padlet as well, the link to it, if you haven't already seen it. Are there any sections people would like to see added to the booklet that we have maybe haven't mentioned already? Mm -hmm. Nope. You want everything comprehensive? Well, thank you. It has been a labour of um, sweat and blood and tears from the committee, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, I hope I hope everybody gets something from it and can input. Yeah, oh, that's rotten. It's going to be there. It's going to be ongoing. It's not going to close. The pilot will be there. So please do add to it. It could be you know tomorrow morning you might think oh I could have I should have said this I should have added that. It will be there for the foreseeable future. So please keep adding to it because like we said before it will continue to evolve. Evolve. I've just seen um, a message from Vicky here. I hope to actually get a budget soon. Been here two years and had no budget except for a five hundred pound donation by a former pupil. What well, thank you. That's a an awful situation to be in. I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, can I ask, is, that, is your budget or lack of budget set by the school or is it a school library service? By the school, yeah. Uh, well, hopefully, I mean, I guess this is what the, this is what tonight's all about in some ways as well. It's, it's building up, which I'm sure you probably do, Vicky, as well, but it's also building up the, the documentation and the policies you need to... Um, to, to put towards um, an SLT and uh, the, 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 um, the requirements for a, bu a budget. Um, and if you do need any help with that, please, please, please do get in touch. Um, like I said before, we'll hopefully be providing templates for, for everything too um, and adding them to the website. Hello, can I, can I say something now? It's probably easier to speak. Yes, hello. Can you hear me, everyone? Yeah. Um, Yes, it's um yes, I'm getting, yes, yeah, we hear you. Hi. Um the 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 way the school does it is they they don't say each department has a certain budget. They make us all bid for the budget. So it's supposed to be this month and I'll be able to set um bid for some money and I have to justify it. Um but as I say, I I've been in the library two years before that the 
they didn't have a like they had a librarian for one year then before that they had nobody for a year and before that they had somebody else for one year and it really hasn't really been managed for about five years and I've lost so much stock um through overdue's books so I'm never going to get back as well so I think at the very beginning at least I'll say I need some money just to replace lost books you know it's my non-fiction is like 15 years old you know is the newest stuff it's just mm -hmm. a dreadful situation <laughs> um so um that's what I'm going to go for but I, I will definitely try and write a policy and do these things to put my case across I have got a really good bo a new boss who started in August but then she just oh. told me um on Friday that they're doing a reshuffle of the responsibilities and I'm getting a different boss who will be my fourth boss in two years. So it's just, it's, it's a bit um, chaotic at our school basically. Um, but um, hopefully they've just, I think- It sounds a bit demoralizing as well. <laughs> like, yeah, the, but the trouble with the high turnover of librarians is meant they haven't, it hasn't been consistent. So they haven't, They've they've got they've not p given the library any money because because of that situation. So fingers crossed. Um, have you have you looked at the reading schools criteria? Yeah, sorry. So you're talking to me um, on the reading schools. If you were going. For if you were going to look at the reading school framework, the, the criteria on that that recommends you know having a contemporary and diverse and inclusive book stock, you know, it's all written down there. It might be something to show to SLT, you know, but what's what's recommended and what's needed as well. Yeah, you know, I, as, I, I will as I have looked at that and I've often thought I would love to try and take part in that, but they just it just doesn't seem to be their priority at that school. And it's sad because the head teacher is a former English teacher and the two of the DHTs are former English teachers. And it's just, they just um, don't seem to, you know, I do some library classes, but then a couple of the teachers don't want to do the library classes, so they just don't do them. It just depends on the, t the English teacher, whether they want to have the classes or not. I find that very frustrating and I feel sorry for the kids in those classes that want to read, but they don't get, they don't really get the chance. You know, it's, I, I it's, um, it's been hard. That, that's hard. That's really hard. Yeah, I guess I can it, understand that. It's, would there be, I'm just wondering if, um, be worth visiting another school you know with a couple of members of slt would they be up for that mm, well some of them have worked in other schools recently <laughs> i've i've uh, i mean they have seen they have been to other schools because they've worked and they you know i've had them talk about other schools i'm in aberdeen and they've been to other schools in aberdeen and this is another thing I'm going to do when I make my bid. I, I've been speaking to my fellow Aberdeen school librarians and, and for example, one school gets £2,000 a year budget, one gets £1,500. I'm going to say, well, why does St Macker get zero? You know, it's like, it's it seems so unfair that the, it's, I believe it's the head teacher that decides. And, you know, I don't understand how you can have, and that we're in the bottom three for the, in the deprived states you know lots of free school meals lots of english as a second language and it's just um i just find it really sad so i'm just really hoping this time i might at least match what the average of the other aberdeen school librarians get so yeah i'm suggesting i'm really really sorry to hear i'm just saying in the chat and suggested that maybe if you go sorry, to the Julie. local authority education department um maybe, you know, they've got a plan or something writing that gives literacy as a priority. You can maybe reference that or refer back to that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. Anne. <laughs> I just wonder if, you know, your head teacher, obviously an English teacher should know, but would it be worth speaking to, our, you know, head teachers or the line managers of school libraries to find out just why they value them and why they give them money? Yeah. I don't know how you get oh, them to do it's, this. It's so sad because this my most recent boss, the one it's she's 
going to stop being my boss in a couple of weeks. She's she is very encouraging and because you see she's just new to the school, but um, I it, it's maybe a changing situation now with the new boss. Perhaps the the new DHD who's going to be my boss was the former head of English at the school. So hopefully, um, it will happen. I think it's it's maybe just been the situation with the high turnover of librarians that they, um. And I now I've been there two years. Maybe they think, well, she's sticking around. Maybe I'll I'll be able to get the money. <laughs> I don't know, but I have I've spent that I've spent the five hundred pounds on diverse books. And as I say, they really like the LGBT books at the school, and they like graphic novels and things like that. So, um, and I've saved they've, they've had two author visits. We had Jonathan Mears came to the school, and we went. The LGBT one was the Wayward Aberdeen Festival, Maya McGregor. Um, yeah. Would love to buy her book. <laughs> yes, um, saw but, that. That was at Hazelhead, wasn't it? Yes, it was at Hazelhead. It was excellent. And the pupils that went absolutely it loved it. Yeah, so. And anyway, so I'm hogging oh, the no. conversation here. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, this is what it's about. And it's, it's, uh, it's also about how school librarians here can you know, give advice and, and share their experience on this and hopefully help you a little bit. And even just yeah. to, to chat about it. And I think I think Pamela's put a link to an article in for you and asked you her to DM you as, her as well. So if there's anything any of us can do, especially on the committee as well, to help, then please get in touch with us. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. I just realized, Sheila, are you the librarian at Elgin? Yes, yes Academy and Murray. You yeah. on Twitter, yeah. And just think, yeah. Probably, yeah. yeah. One of the Twitter <laughs> Oh, nice to um, put a face yeah, to the name, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I know I'm not sure yeah, my face. Well, um, hopefully we can... We can't see your face, but we can definitely right. hear you. I'll put my face <laughs> hopefully on. we can have other events like this. You know, if you found this valuable, then... Oh, hi there. Um, you see? If you found it valuable, we can... Yeah, I can see you. We can do other things where you know we can share issues or you know see what people put back in the evaluations and we could look at creating another event okay thank you yeah thank you no thank you very much vicky would anybody i think we're almost out of time would anybody else like to flag anything else up that was mentioned in the guide or just anything else at all The guide link is in the chat now, um, along with the Padlet, and that will stay on the Silips website. So please do, as Derek says, if an idea comes to you tonight or tomorrow morning or just any time, um, please do post them. It's really easy. Everything's anonymous in Padlet, so you can just add a little comment there. Um, and we've also popped in the chat an evaluation form for tonight. Um, so we will send this around again when we've got the recording, but please do share your thoughts. Um, so that you can help shape the future of fantastic SLGS events just like this. Um, and of course, if you would like to be involved with the committee as well, that little question is there. So always <laughs> benefit from new ideas and you could be shaping work like this just incredible new guide. Um, I don't know if anyone has any last points or last questions. Otherwise, I guess we're hitting six o'clock, so we might just wrap up now um so i think it would just be great if you could all join me in saying a massive thank you to the slgs committee and um, thank you sheila for chairing the event so incredibly derek for that absolutely expert guide to the guide um and you cope with the sound difficulty so well we've learned so much and the, the kind of essence of the guide just the diversity of content there really came through loud and clear and thank you Gillian as well for commanding the chat and the questions keeping all that flowing it's um I've learned so much about the sector hope you guys have as well we will share the recording as soon as we can um and yeah thank you so much to you all for for coming along and hope you enjoy the rest of your evenings thank you